What you're going to see is uh, a small group operating in the midst of a much larger group. Uh, the members had been participating in encounter groups for portions of the preceding four days and uh, uh, I think are more ready to respond to each other than might have been the case otherwise. Um, I think it's difficult always for me as facilitator and for members of the group to uh, participate as fully or as deeply as they might uh, under the eyes of cameras and under the eyes of 60 other people. But um, uh, nonetheless, I think you will see some of the beginning stages of a group and see them get to uh, deeper expressions of uh, personal feeling. You'll see um, uh, situations in which honest feedback is given to individuals. Uh, you'll see a number of the characteristics of the, uh, of the group process in what follows. I don't know what use we want to make of the time or what use we dare make of the time or anything, but maybe we can really get to know each other. That's always a possibility. All I can think of right now is I wish I'd shaved this morning. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel people looking at me. I thought maybe you were starting a beard. Well, I am, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> didn't know I was going to be... Yeah, I, I waited until tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> And I feel a little guilty about uh, staying here and not letting the girl in. And uh, for being so stubborn, wanting to stay in here. Last year, we had a group out the Hoya when you came. And I was up on the stage sitting there. And all of a sudden, my nobility got the best of me. And I jumped up with a girl sit down. <laughs> and, and I've been wrestling with that ever since. And I started to wrestle with that this morning. And so uh, I talked to Gary. And I said, let's go and get in that group. And then he came and I looked around and I said, we should have some other girls. And I said, the town, we need some other girls. And I was going to say, what the heck, don't you get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I kind of admired his stubbornness. Well, I'm not going to say he got halfway out and halfway in. I think it's the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so that's uh, kind of what my guilt and anxiety is. And, uh, well, but I, yeah, maybe so. But, but it sounds like you're also saying, uh, I just figured, to hell with it. I'm not going to. Do it again. I'm not going to give up my place to a girl or something. That's right. I do. And then after I did that, after I relaxed, I kind of stupid ass, you know. <laughs> and, and so then I turned it on Tom. But <laughs> <laughs> so, I wanted to say that. I guess I got defensive and figured out, you know, how can I prevent them from throwing me out of here? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Yeah, I think I had the same feeling you did. I wasn't going to give up the seat for anything. <laughs> I felt then when Karen said, do you want another girl? Because I was looking for Karen before the other girls came. And, I, and then I felt, geez, I should get up. She's in my group. And, uh, but I didn't. <laughs> I always want to look at Carl, and, and I don't want to. You know, I want to look at the master see if I'm kind of doing all right, I guess, or something. And so, to keep from looking at him, I'm going to look at Bill. <laughs> I'm nervous as hell already, man. <laughs> 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 Bill, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I like that. The uh, chatter that uh, began, uh, the very social chatter and the self-conscious laughter, is very characteristic of any group that's just starting, whether it's a demonstration group in front of a large group, as this one was, or whether it's a group starting by itself. And my only purpose at this stage was to try to glean what uh, a tiny amount of, of personal feeling that came out in the man's statement when he said he was just not going to get out of the group, even though I preferred to have a girl substitute for one of the fellows. Uh, so I responded to that uh, feeling. 
Uh, that's usually my purpose at the start of a group, to um, respond to the slightest glimmer of personal feeling that may emerge. That's why I listen pretty carefully to what people say, and uh, even though what they're saying may not be very important in itself, I want them to know that I am understanding, and that's why I respond in the way I do. I felt like I couldn't put my knee up if I moved on the way in. I feel more comfortable doing that. But do you feel that other people are in intrusion? Something. Well, not really an intrusion, but it isn't the same thing. And, you know, I definitely feel their presence. Oh, yes. I do, too. No, I don't only really feel it. I see it. <laughs> But I mean, the, the way they'll react and things, too. It's interesting to see the group begin dealing with the fact that they are being watched by others. The, the fact that this has been brought out into the open um, and their uneasiness about it, I think makes it more likely that they will be able to really deal with each other as a group. But we'll have to see what, see what happens. All right, so, you, so you're saying we're working against a lot of obstructions, obstacles. Will they... Will they override us, or will we override them, I suppose that's the question. Yeah, I think you got irritated then. I felt as though you were irritated that we were dwelling on that, and you didn't like it. If so, it was very mild, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, whatever else we are, we're people here together, damn it. Yeah, I guess there is some irritation. I was thinking, you know, why don't we get started? Why, why do we have to always talk about the obstacles? But, uh, you know, I didn't know what to do. You know, I, I could have said, well, you know, here we go. And said it that way instead of saying it like I am. Well, I guess there's times when I feel more intimate than when, you know, than in the middle of a baseball park. I don't think I would be as intimate as I would be in a room that I felt I'd been with people before that I knew and that I had a few more things to share. I'm not so sure that I want to share some things that are going to be all over the United States on the camera. You know, it's, uh, and so that, for that reason, I think that to get those feelings out, that they're, they're really there for me anyhow. If I don't deal with those first, I'm not going to be able to deal with anything else. I wouldn't be sitting here worrying about that. That's how I feel anyway. That's why I want to get on my guilt feelings and everything. That's it. In fact, I'm talking kind of harsh to you, you know. Yeah, hey, I, what, are you, what are you doing that for, you know? Why don't you let us be, you know? Why, uh, I'm getting that message. Yeah, it's like, I think that's one of the things that uh, kind of puts me in touch with you, Carl, because uh, uh, just before we finished there, somebody asked about the machines there, and uh, I really felt that I, uh, I could appreciate you more as a person then. And I still have this, this hang-up about you, you know, because it's either, you know, all through school and everything, Carl Rogers, but... Uh, um, it was kind of like, you know, now I know what this is Carl Rogers on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that wasn't coming across before, and I couldn't get that. Yeah. I'm Some uh, facilitators would probably shortcut a lot of this uh, milling them around and relatively small talk which is going on by the use of uh, some sort of exercise which would more or less uh, plunge the group into more of a feeling relationship. Uh, I respect people who do that but I know it's not my style, it's not my way. Um, I prefer to let a group uh, move into deeper areas at its own pace even though it may seem quite slow at first. So my main function is to uh, listen as carefully as I can during this period, to respond with understanding to those who express any degree of feeling, to utilize my own feelings when they're real and a part of the situation, um, but then letting the group process move slowly onward rather than trying to uh, quickly dip them into feelings. My reason for taking this approach is that I have learned the hard way, I feel, 
that it pays to accept a group where it is. You can get more quicker, immediate results through the use of exercises, but I think in the long run you have to pay for that in uh, resentment from the group members or from some of the group members um, and that uh, also when they do move to a deeper level they realize we have done this ourselves nobody uh, nobody pushed us here irritated because I feel uh, I'll put it now in terms of my feeling I feel I don't want to be uh, spoiled by machines And I guess there's no doubt. And I wish you felt that way too, Mr. President. <laughs> I guess I'm sitting here thinking why I'm not as annoyed as maybe I, I should be, you know, at the machines and, and the people. Maybe I should be more annoyed <coughs> than I am. I don't understand why you should be any particular way. <laughs> yeah, well, as soon as I said that, I was... <laughs> that came to mind, but I, I mean, I, I guess... Maybe I, I'm not as aware of, of things as I should be. I mean, as I would like to be. You mean, <laughs> you mean annoyed or, or anxious or, you know, nervous? <clears throat> well, I guess I'm about more nervous about being right here with you people than I am, and maybe this is my way of copying out. Maybe it is the people in a camera. I really haven't thought too much necessarily about the fact that it's going to be used until you brought it up, you know. I guess that really doesn't, that part. Maybe I'm a built-in ham. Well, when we first, I was scared to death, and I think I was, and I was afraid of myself and my own reaction because of my present emotional state. But like right now, you know, someone said they felt quiet, and I just feel like an excitement, like I can feel it running through my hands and my adrenaline's just going. And I'm scared now, but like... It's, it's kind of a good, <laughs> a good scared. Yeah, like I can still shake and be aware of it, but, um, but I'm not afraid of myself and my own reaction now. While the group is still talking about their fear of the camera and the group and so on, yet uh, you can see more real feelings beginning to uh, emerge. Um, personal inner feelings. I think these would not have come so early in the group, uh, except for the fact that they had already been meeting in encounter groups for four days, so that, um, or at least for part of four days, so that they were uh, more opened up than a group would be ordinarily in their first session. This to me is the beginning of the payoff for uh, simply listening and responding that gradually um, real feelings do begin to emerge and uh, clearly they're emerging because members of the group wish to express them. And to me that's, uh, that's a good feeling when that happens. I don't know if it's better, but different than when I first sat down, because now I did it. And, and it's like I can almost, almost let, let it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, like I think it would be more difficult now for me to get up and walk away than it would be to stay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you want to walk away? Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't walk away. I know I couldn't walk away. I don't think I could stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get any further into what uh, makes this seem like such a great big risk? When you said you're afraid of being on the hot seat, the well, it's, um, afraid people will get after you, or? No. Sort of what, I feel like I'm a very open person, except when I have to be open, and then I feel like that there's, I don't, you know, I, I don't think I can live up to what some people feel is Emily's spontaneity. You know, I don't, I don't have any right now, and uh, 
I was even wondering if I could say anything. Uh, that, for me, that's <laughs> I, like that. People would say, oh, oh, you know, but that's really something. <clears throat> it's so naked. I feel so naked. It's not just, you know, it's, it's one thing to share something with with just some other people. I don't know how many we are. Uh, it's something else to be watched, sharing something. You know, like a one-way share. <laughs> Did you feel pressurized that Gary and I had uh, said, I'll oh, come on and take the risk? Or, uh, I, I, felt, I felt I was challenged because I was going to do this last year and then I didn't do it. Um, and I wanted to do it. And then I was glad I didn't do it. And I thought if I ever got the other, another opportunity that, you know, uh, maybe I would be able to try. And this was, seemed to be it. Um, It really but was a big challenge. step when, <clears throat> when you moved into the group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt badly when you came and sat down because you and I were talking about, you know, opening, well, getting in, in the group. And we said something to you, and you said, no, no, you couldn't. And then we, and after we came up here, I felt as though maybe we'd left you too soon. You know, we didn't give you enough support. Well, somebody said that. <clears throat> Somebody else came up to me. I don't even know who it was now because I wasn't like I wasn't even hardly seeing. And they said, "Well, you expect your group to take risks, and you won't take one." Oh. <laughs> I found myself thinking, just walking over. You know, I, I, I like he was. I was just moving over here. Like that's right. You know, I do expect other people to take risks. I don't think I expect anybody to take this big a risk unless they want to. I feel like that should be me. Yeah. Entering an encounter group is always a risk, uh, not always as public a risk as it is here, uh, but I feel this uh, girl has really put her finger on what it means to participate in a group. It means taking a personal risk, and so the um, uh, step she took of joining the group is, as she indicates, a very important one for her, even though so far she has really expressed nothing of herself, but she's put herself into the situation where that is increasingly likely. And uh, I think that uh, this is one of the valuable aspects of an encounter group, that people can risk themselves in a variety of ways. I don't know what's been going on between you and I ever since that day at the table, you know. And I really don't know how you feel about that. I, when I look at you, I know you smile at me. You look the other way all the time, and I do the same thing. And uh, and I guess I've been anxious about that. So when you came, I was really happy you came and Bill held your hand and thought that was kind of nice. But uh, I just don't know how you feel about me, I guess, and I'm kind of interested in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, kind of, I really am, you know. I feel we really haven't had any contact, or just so very light and superficial since we've been here. Yeah. And, um... There goes my niceness, wanting to be nice and say something. But, like, I don't have a whole lot of feelings in any direction. Um, but you evidently felt something happened at that meal. Yeah, I really did, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, let me Does make that sure. Have any reality for yeah, you? Let, let me make sure I, I've got the right uh, meal. meal. <laughs> <laughs> Worse yet, the right person. <laughs> when I was gonna. <laughs> Why don't you give her a few clues? <laughs> no, when I was gonna sit down and I sit, and then someone was sitting alone, I said I was gonna take my feminine prerogative to change my mind. That's right. Yeah. Um. Well, at that time, like, I was sort of torn because, you know, I've been using meals, um, 
very consciously. I noticed it from the first night and the party after. Not just then, like, if it's going to be lunchtime, and I've been with my group for four hours, and I know in an hour I'm going to be with them for another four hours. It's like, I've got to get away that for that hour. I can't sit with them all at a table, because it's not the whole group, so it's not like the continuation of. And anyway, I've been doing that. And, you know, like I've seen you, and you were a new person um, that I sort of wanted uh, to sit with. Um, and also, too, because I think my real feeling, and I, I can't, you know, I'm blocking now within myself who the other person was I went to even sit with, but not really feeling I wanted to sit with that person. Like, I was doing what I thought either, you know, that niceness again or the need rather than just how I felt. And, okay, another person might feel bad, but just do that. I try to make you feel bad. You know, I made a conscious effort to do that. And yeah, I know, but I didn't you take it. You felt sort of rejected or deserted yeah. or something. Yeah, you know, I don't know whether it was, yeah, I did. You know, like, and I really tried to put you in a bind. And, and the reason I want to do that because I wanted to touch you in some way. Mm. And I thought if I get you angry or something, it would be just as easy. You know, it's only I find that I can do it. And I didn't get angry. No, you're, you're too and nice. <laughs> too nice to get angry. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Maybe I don't know how. You know, like. Um, but I didn't take it personally, as me. You know. Mm -hmm. You know. So in that way, um, you were trying to make me feel bad, and I didn't feel <coughs> again. You know, like I was able to get out of it in an in intellectual, witty kind of way, yeah. because I didn't take it personally. Mm -hmm. I was at the table with you at the time, and I, and I kind of thought that you were just a little bit angry, or a little bit... Um, I really didn't understand why you left, but one thing, you already put your trade on, then you, you turned around and left, and I... Well, this was, what, yesterday? Probably two days ago, two days, I think, yeah. yeah. But I, I remember that, that I, I thought you were a little bit angry, or, or maybe scared of the table. Because we were a full table and you moved over and somebody behind us with just one person sitting there. Right. Yeah. Did you consider her as a challenge to you? Is that, is that why you tried to...? No, I think Carl had it. I think I felt a little rejected. I kind of made room for her to sit down, you know. Because mm -hmm. uh, she, she was looking around, looked like she was looking for a place to sit. So I, mm -hmm. I said, I'd like to get to meet her. And then I made room for her and then she put her tray down. And she said, well, and she went over and sat with the guy. And, uh, well, uh, so I tried to touch her. I wanted to meet her. And I wanted to get And so I've been trying to look at her, catch her eye whenever I can. And she's just like that. She gives me that nice smile and looks away. You know? <laughs> and I, I'd like to say, you know, I'm, try I'm trying to learn to control it. Because um, I've been made very self-conscious about it. But... <laughs> It's very nice. Is it nice because of what others say, or do you feel that sometimes the smile gets in your own way? Mm, no, I wasn't. Not, I'm not always aware of it until people, you know, talk about it, and then I just feel the muscles and everything, and then and then it gets tight. See, then when you talk about it, it gets tight, and I wanna, like, and then it's not necessarily real from the point of discussion on because I'm aware of it. And, yeah, and I purposely don't smile. I look sternly at you, know, hoping that something else would happen. <laughs> and, uh, Can we have lunch today? <laughs> In this uh, segment, I feel I did do something facilitative. Uh, it was clear that the um, uh, meal situation had meaning for the man in the black shirt. And um, so I called him back to that after the group had sort of left that situation. I was glad I did because uh, that, I think, helped him to express the um, rejection and irritation and anger that he felt toward uh, the girl. And um, then, uh, as we saw in the last bit, uh, she's beginning to explore the defensiveness of her smile, uh, the fact that uh, Behind that may be many feelings which she's not very aware of. Uh, she says she doesn't know how to get angry. And um, she's beginning to realize that uh, the uh, 
her, her ever-present nice smile may be a may be largely a defensive reaction. Now this, uh, uh, as you'll see, I'm not trying to interpret any of this. My whole purpose is to really listen to what's coming out of the members, um, not to um, add any interpretive comment because I think interpretive comments really slow up the uh, group process. I don't know. I, I last night I felt kind of close to you, and and uh, I, I saw someone else reach out. You know, I couldn't, but I felt someone else reach out, and I felt you turn them off, like you know, like uh, you were kind of preoccupied, and, and nobody else could share with you uh, whatever it was you were thinking. Was that me? No, no. I, I saw you do the same thing. I, I saw you reach out, and I saw her accept it as much as she could. But I had the feeling that you two knew each other, uh, either from the group or, or from some other relationship. I guess I feel kind of guilty, because we had lunch together. <laughs> 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 no, we just had one, one lunch together, and that was really meaningful to me, because that's the first time that I really made an outward well, that was a risk for me to come across the room. And then, uh, and I don't know why, but I felt very good that, that she accepted it. I really don't know what I would have done uh, had she rejected it. Because I really, maybe I was just going against her. Uh, felt very warm uh, towards her, but. It really, it really hit you, though, when he said that you had trouble making, uh, I don't know exactly what your words were. Close. Close uh, relationship. So yeah, I saw your eyes well, and you almost cried, didn't you? you know, when he was talking about last night, I think that's more of what... Oh, Lord. I think your smile invites people to want to come closer and, and form a, a, you know, some kind of feeling bond. I, I, I really felt that, you know, myself, and I think maybe that's what you felt. I really like that. I like the way you look. I like the way you smile. And uh, kind of your eyes. Yeah. And uh, so I feel drawn very much. And I don't know, maybe it's, uh, maybe that's as far as it goes. Or maybe you don't want it to seem that way. Really. No, I feel much more positively when you're thoughtfully quiet than when you have this, uh, Ever-present ever smile. And when you look at someone, you really look at someone. You can see that. This is an excellent example of the um, kind of feedback that can take place in an encounter group, where uh, the young woman is faced with the fact that uh, another person feels that she's fearful of close relationships. Um, one man has already expressed his anger toward her. Um, another expresses some very positive feedback, but also the fear of what would have happened to him had she rejected him. Uh, all of this really touches her, and I think she realizes that they are expressing some very true things about the way in which she interacts with people. Um, it's this kind of uh, feedback which occurs in an encounter group that almost never occurs in real life. We simply do not tell people how they come across to us. And here, she's getting that kind of very valuable feedback, and it looks as though she's ready to absorb it and probably uh, do some deep thinking about it afterward. As a facilitator, I'm willing to uh, give feedback to a member of the group, too, when some feeling 
surprise is strongly in me, whether uh, positively or negatively. Uh, here I was more concerned with uh, listening to the members giving and receiving feedback, and uh, there was no strong feeling uppermost in me, so I did not attempt to uh, give feedback, but I wouldn't hesitate to if I did have a strong feeling. I was as surprised as you may have been to find that immediately after I said I had no strong feelings, I did have some quite uh, uh, comparative feelings toward her, liking her better when she uh, was quiet and thoughtful. And so there is an example of my giving feedback to a member of the group. Are you? No, I am quite angry with her. Well, I think that you're angry because you're infatuated and she's not infatuated with now I'm dumping it on you. Yeah. But maybe it's me, you know, and maybe I'm projecting. No. I could, I don't know, but I, I, I did feel rejected and I suppose that is. Yeah, that's what I mean, you know. Men are very funny like this. <laughs> I feel like we have to group together, you know. Well, I then you better get in here, then. <laughs> yeah, I'd like... Maybe I was saying something that stick together, it's because I was feeling a, a little protective towards you. It seemed like you had yeah. a lot of emotions there, and I wasn't... You know, I, maybe I felt like maybe the group should get away from you, but then I don't want to be protective either, so I just let it sit at that. It crossed my mind, too, but I felt that if you didn't want the group to focus on you, you would have nerve enough to say so. Also, I don't know all that you were communicating to me with your eyes, but it seemed to be a lot. Without knowing what it was, I guess I'd like to ask, were you communicating a lot? Yeah, like there's so much going on. Um, like all kinds of thoughts are running through my mind when you talk about the females sticking together and I think of our reference group and the men talking about their wives and like the stereotype and you know, I, they're all wrong and um, then all the different feelings in terms of well talking about last night myself in terms of getting close to others um, in terms of knowing your own if you want to say raw emotional state, how, how can you... know at what point that you know other people want to help, but... you need the closeness. And, yeah, you can risk, but you can only go so far, just in terms of knowing your own strength. Or these kinds of things. All kinds of things going on. Here. <laughs> One thing that I think deserves comment here is just to think back a moment. I don't know how many minutes we are into the group, but uh, if you compare this with the start of the group such a short time ago, to me, it's quite astonishing that they have reached the depth that they have. Uh, you notice that as Kathy speaks now, her voice is slow and hesitant. There's nothing like the social chatter that there was at the beginning. She's really trying to explore herself. 
and the group has given her both the negative and positive feedback, which evidently has stirred up all kinds of things in her. Now, that's what I call sort of the inevitability of the group process if the facilitator doesn't get in the way of it. And uh, I think that uh, by responding both to his own feelings within and to the feelings of other members of the group, he helps this process to uh, emerge and come about. You can really use the next four rather than at just a lighter level. I guess that's what Lucy was asking. Do you want some of that rest right now, or...? <clears throat> I... Like, right now, I feel fine. And then this goes back to, you know, like, um, my feelings of... in my self-centeredness, of which I've accepted very much in the past few days. Am I taking away from the group? You know, some seconds I feel yes, and some seconds I feel no. Um, you say I don't know your group, but I don't feel you're taking away from this group. That would be a very amazing <coughs> help. I wasn't referring really so much to my groups, but my individual relations with people. I think it's interesting to notice throughout this whole segment that when uh, Kathy was being quite strongly um, attacked or getting some pretty negative feedback, that other members of the group uh, rather quickly spoke up with uh, their positive feelings toward her. To me, this is one of the uh, natural events in a group, that since everyone has an individual perception of a person, um, some perceptions are positive, some are negative, and this uh, is important to the, to the person. I think it's part of the whole helping process in the group. And you may notice I gave her an opportunity to, as I put it, get off the hook. If she felt she needed a rest now, uh, she really looked as though she had about all she could assimilate at this point. But her response was not clear. Evidently, she didn't really care to uh, uh, stop the feedback. Um, and when she said that uh, perhaps she was, at least I understood her to say, that she was too uh, self-centered uh, and perhaps uh, focusing the group on herself, um, I certainly didn't feel that way, and I said so. Now, someone might say, uh, oh, I see, you're being supportive at that point. No, and yes. Uh, of course, what I said must have felt supportive to her, but that's not the reason I said it. I said it because I felt it, which for me is the uh, best clue the facilitator has as to what part he should play in the, in the group. Uh, when I listen, it's because I feel like listening. Um, when I said, as I did much earlier in the, in the film, oh, to hell with the film, that's because that was my feeling. And when I tell her, uh, you seem to me to be uh, very helpful to the group, that's exactly what I was feeling at that moment. I feel like saying, you know, there's a social hour in Lounge 12 every evening. <laughs> Maybe we better both make better use of that lounge. Um, I always feel in a predicament when people say that to me in a group, because I'm not sure. Um, not, yeah, instant let you in bit, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult thing. Uh, I feel a warmth from you, and, and yet, at the same time, a you know, pushing away. I wondered if that was somehow related to what you said before, you know, and how that affects the way I am. I don't know if it's a pushing away that I have been... I don't think they push people away. 
There's more that I don't. And I don't flirt enough. You know, it's not, it's not a negative thing. It would be interesting to know what was in the minds of the various group members um, after uh, Kathy became quite obviously emotional. Um, probably some of them were feeling that uh, Kathy had had as much as she could take, and so they turned away from her on that account and began to talk to Emily. Um, others undoubtedly were uh, a little fearful by this amount of uh, feeling and probably were withdrawing from that. At any rate, it's quite obvious that the uh, uh, group at this point uh, leaves Kathy to herself and begins to uh, focus on Emily. And uh, I think Kathy, in a sense, has answered my previous question, or the group has answered it for her, that uh, she has had all she wants to try to assimilate at this moment. As facilitator, uh, I simply observe this change in the process. I don't comment on it. I feel that, um, in the first place, any interpretation I could give would be a guess. Suppose I guessed that they were withdrawing because they had felt too much emotion. Uh, I think that simply makes the uh, group self-conscious about itself. I, I would much rather have them look back afterward and realize, uh, I was upset by that uh, display of emotion than for me to try to uh, tell them what they are feeling when they haven't expressed it themselves. I stick to what they're willing to express themselves. Because we don't talk about our feelings. Yeah, well, I don't really, I, I mean, I can't even give you. Whatever he said, I reacted positively. That's all I did. I mean, I, he didn't certainly make you a point of conversation. You just came up from time to time. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> now, he has this bad habit. He tells other people about me. He says to me, I, I often compliment you to other people, just not when you're there. <laughs> you know? And I don't always believe him. Or, like, I would like him to do it when I'm there. You know? So when other people say things like that, like you just said, it's like I want to know everything, all the details, you know. Why can't you remember it? <laughs> Very open, honest. Oh, well, I don't really want to know, because I, I have a hard time handling that. You know, maybe in secret. <laughs> hey, I, hey that's, that's the greatest well, flirtatious uh, thing I've seen from her. I feel good about that. I even think that maybe you and Dan should form a group. Well, we do. <laughs> I'm just insatiable. <laughs> hmm. And I would be glad to have lunch with you. <laughs> that, that insatiable bit sort of surprises me. You, it doesn't seem as though you are a person who would be that desirous of, of uh, or that needful of having people to your good qualities. I don't think it's everybody. I think it's mainly him. And I think it has to be constant with them. You know? and, uh, and I always say to myself, when I go into a group, this time it's not important to me if everybody likes me. But after that horrible silence is over, I know that it's important that they will like me. <laughs> so it was in the fire. Even if I risk that, I still want it to come out okay. You know? And if they like me, I want them to tell me. I don't want them to see. I don't want them to go away and tell somebody else. I try the same feeling Carl does, though, about you, too. You know, there'd be all kinds of people would compliment you. And, really, my and then I get embarrassed. Would, <clears throat> yeah, my compliment would be anything. You know, you say, well, oh, I've heard that does. before. Well, I'm just saying, huh? I, I think that there's something male-female issue um, 
in that in terms of like the, I'm not sure the feeling is a kind of compliment, not just because she's a pretty girl, because she knows lots of people, whether they say it or not, are giving her that kind of thing, but it's like, in spite of the fact that I'm this way, you know, like, but how about me? I like to know I'm pretty, too. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Funny, I, uh, everybody can like me except one person, and I find myself believing them. I sort of like, in my heart, I believe them. I don't, I don't ever truly believe, but they disturb me more. In my head, I can say, that's bullshit. I know you're wrong. And I go away, and I think about it, and I ponder it, and I, you know, I give it so much time that I, I like giving myself away. Mm -hmm. I keep wanting to say, but you'll be a good secretary. That's something that, you know, maybe I shouldn't say, but I think it's meaningful to her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know what you I don't know what you mean either. It's <laughs> something that she's <laughs> continually told. You'll be a good secretary, you know, that, that's the limits. And, and she's much more than, a, you know, a good secretary. No, there was a but time in my never, life. never be satisfied. There were five girls in my family, and my father went down a list and said the eldest would go to college, and two others would go to college, but that I should become a good secretary. He thought maybe I could become a good one. But it really, you know, he wasn't going to put me to college. And I, that's what he's referring to. Yeah, I, I felt real ambivalent about saying that because I knew the rest of you didn't know, know about it, but uh, I, I thought it was appropriate. I can certainly understand from my own experience this feeling that nine people could tell you you're good looking or nice or uh, have many other good qualities. If one person says, or, or even asks, off. yeah, you turn me off, that's the one you'll believe, really. I, I, I thought I saw you do that this morning. Several people complimented you. So there's two people over here who shared with me that they didn't, they were kind of, I was kind of turning them off. I think I could establish a relationship with them, you know. I wanted these other people to say these other things, too. At least two of you remember here. Oh, that's, yeah. But I avoid people thing. who don't like me. That's part of it, too. It's interesting that you picked that up about me, because uh, I thought I'd made a good deal of progress on that. I at least can... <laughs> I, don't, I don't turn off good comments right the moment they happen. Anyway, I do let them <laughs> sink in. Yeah, because I felt easy. If I want to get to know Carl, I should insult him a little bit. Then <laughs> <laughs> he'll believe me and he'll say, ah, I, you know, uh, uh, that's really what went through my mind this morning yeah. when I picked up. But anyway, I'm less that way than I used to be. I think that's possible at this point because I believe the uh, group is already beginning to accept me as a participant and not simply as a special person, a facilitator. And it always makes me feel good when I can move more into becoming a participant in the group rather than a very special person. One other comment I might make is that uh, as the group moves more deeply and, and is exploring more significant feelings, uh, I think the main thing for the facilitator is to realize that the group process is underway and to try not to do anything that will uh, disturb it, but simply things that will facilitate it. You were kind of dragging it, so then I was kind of unhappy. That's when it ticks me off. I feel like you missed the whole point. I think maybe I got the point that you were, you know, that you were really angry and you wanted to express that. Then again, I felt that it was, it uh, was out of proportion to the, the thing. The issue wasn't the cops. <clears throat> uh, that's what I feel. So many people misunderstood. The issue isn't the cops. It's the intrusion. Yeah. Okay. The intrusion. I know. I realize it. Yeah. But nevertheless. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to I want to say make sure you weigh it down to the ounce the next time you you know your anger comes up it's got to be just exactly appropriate to the situation. Yeah, that's well, his, his, that his remark that made you so mad. Yeah, it makes me. What what? 
the whole thing. What about it? That's hmm? uh, like I should weigh my anger and, you know, assess the situation and then just give so much of that because that's the appropriate thing. Or um, <clears throat> I'm dragging it out. Oh, no, I didn't like that. Just say the hell with that. Yeah. Or to hell with him, is that part of it too? I thought that that's what you were saying. I'm interested as I watch this to see that um, uh, I didn't respond to the man's anger because I thought that was so clearly expressed there could be no mistaking it. But um, uh, I did try to pick up Emily's anger and that's why I put it a little more strongly than, well, definitely more strongly than she had when I said, uh, you just feel to hell with that or maybe to hell with him. Um, I think that, again, this is the uh, function of a facilitator to try to catch the meaning and feeling somewhat underneath the level of the words that are being spoken. That must mean you wanted to say something? Well, I really feel like I'd like to say something, but I can't say anything in particular. <laughs> I'd like to say it. <laughs> See, we weren't contributing enough or something like that? You wish you did feel more strongly toward others one way or the other? Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know if I if I do generally. Right now. I yeah. Well, maybe it was a little generally too. I did feel a little relieved in the earlier session when you said that um, sometimes you, uh, that you don't tend to have immediate likes and dislikes as much as other people. <coughs> in this first chapter, there's been a lot of real strong approaches to people. Like you're really warm the first thing you see somebody, and I just don't have that kind of strong immediate response. I guess. That's a little suspect. They're not not quite approvable or something. I have felt it before, and that's why I was relieved. Did <laughs> <laughs> you had some of that too? I guess I don't know what to do with it when it comes my way. Like we had an opportunity last night that uh, I felt very good in, in giving. I'm not sure that I can reconstruct my experience uh, accurately in drawing out this uh, young woman, but. From what I said, I believe that I saw a look of expectancy on her face as though she wished to speak. I do try to be alert to that in a group, especially uh, if it's someone who has not spoken up before. And so it's not unusual for me to ask if, uh, if she wants to speak or whether her face signifies that. I'm not very uh, uh, proud of my response. What would you like to say if you could say it? Um, because that is kind of a trick. Um, I don't approve of that in myself. I feel that's kind of a formula. Um, at least, though, with our interest on her, um, we did succeed in drawing her somewhat more into the group. Um, I don't feel that was very successful, but I'm quite willing to try that sort of thing because often behind that sort of... Um, look of readiness to speak, there are some real feelings that a person is highly desirous of contributing to the group, but is fearful of uh, breaking in. So I do try to support them in 
in uh, coming into the group. More strongly, mm -hmm. two people. Well, all of a sudden, I'm starting to feel an anger that I never realized I had. But there's some words that you've got to go back and delete from your books. It's unconditional positive regard. Because, you know, like you come to these groups, and all of a sudden, it's this instance we're human beings, and because we're human beings, we have this respect kind of thing. And maybe it's because I don't have it. And I'm not open enough to say that because I don't have it, you can. But it's like instantaneously, it's like there's just not a relationship there or something like that. And unless it's that phenomena of love at first sight or something that, you know, may exist. Um, and then I get all these feelings of a gooey, sugary, phony. Um, well, so might, I might, relieve you to, might relieve you to know that in one group where this was discussed, I finally said, well, here's unconditional positive regard. <laughs> <laughs> they felt very good about that. <laughs> Just a little for me. <laughs> yeah, but your main point is that just don't believe that people have an instant gooey warmth for somebody else. I, I, or, or if they do, you don't like it at any rate. I would like to believe that for them it's real and genuine, and I'd like to accept it. And but um, but I, in in reality, I don't think I do because I react to it. Well, I guess I would feel it. If anything I've said or written helps to promote a, a kind of an instant uh, and somewhat phony warmth and caring, I feel about it the same way you do. I feel very angry at that. And I haven't even read all that you've written. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it is worse than others. <laughs> Because what she was saying uh, was in opposition to some of the things I've written, was critical of unconditional positive regard, I tried to be very sure to catch and understand the full depth of her feeling. I think this, to me, is important when a feeling is directed toward me. I really want to take it in and let the person know that I have taken it in, uh, even though it may be, uh, uh, even though they may regard it as being critical of me. Something you don't like at all. No, I wouldn't take it personally. Put another name on it, and you know. Um, no, I don't think what I'd even go. What was the anger uh, then? Perhaps the anger at the people I feel who, you know, like pick that up to. Uh, okay. did, did you feel guilty because you didn't have it? I've been asked about 30 some times what my comment was yesterday in the community group when I had spontaneously said just for the person next to me something and someone saw that I was talking. So um, maybe for time purposes for myself in case there's some other people <laughs> when I'm asking. It was something to do with um, my feeling that, like, like, was I an insensitive person because I just didn't feel, you know, all the, this kind of thing. There were these strong reactions in the community group, like, um, whether your reaction and what you had said was out of proportion or not, they dwelled on it for so long. I and know. Like, there, it just wasn't, it wasn't real to me. I just couldn't see all these people, you know, and then people have to show anger, like, this is a new thing to show anger because we don't. Then you get, have to get all excited and, damn it, that really bothers me. And, you know, like, um... Then you get a silver star for showing <laughs> anger. Yeah, like, but, and it's, for me, it doesn't come across as, um, as real. That's what I was really reacting to, and that's why I didn't say anything really yesterday. You know, I was really reacting to how long it would be, you know, I sense that we're doing the same thing again, but I have a need to do it, too. 
this bothers me a great deal, just the very thing you're talking about, that if, if we start to make a game out of being real, uh, good Lord, that's, uh, that's the worst game I know. But at the same time, when you say that, I'm listening to your words. Well, my feeling is that when anybody approaches you, you're real nice. That you feel that you should be smiling and real nice. And even whether you feel that or not. Because I haven't seen you do anything else that's fine with people when they, when they approach you, you know. So my thing, here you are hammering at this thing with people. And at the same time, I, I have just, I'm just saying, I'm kind of angry with you. Because it sounds like you're doing the very thing that you're not. I come across, or the, react, or the feedback I've gotten, I come across in two ways. Either people think I really am real or genuine, or there's the one out of ten people. For, you know, the one person in the group who thinks I'm phony as hell. And boy, that's the one, you know, like I tune in on. Um, kind of thing. And, and I'm never taken, in, you know, in between. But I rode the elevator with you a couple of times, and you were very, very placid, kind of quiet. And I looked at your name tag and kind of made some fun, you know, trying to get something from you. you remember that? A couple times, maybe you don't even remember. A couple times, <laughs> you were very, very quiet. And she was. I guess I'm really trying to support her, maybe a little bit. Yeah. But she's not always. Now maybe that what makes me worry. You know, what is her about? Why do you? Yeah. You know, I, I felt though as she, as she hid in her voice. I don't care what. If she came through with the greatest uh, smile in the world, I, I really felt she was really meant something. Yeah, I think right now, but right. but. Well, oh, I thought you were responding to her. Oh, well, not right now. I hear no, her saying this now. I see her differently. But my, my feeling is that she's saying that people uh, feel that they have to be a certain way in order to uh, get acceptance or to be genuine or to get their star, like Carol says. And I see, the only times I've seen her, it's only my experience, is that when other people approach her, when I approach her, she's very nice. And, and I'm not so sure she feels that, all the, you know. So that's why I guess they're trying to get you to go. Okay. Maybe, um, you know, smile means nice. Yeah. And maybe a smile is just a physical reaction for me. I, I don't, yeah. you know, but I, I don't, I don't know. know. That. Uh, you know. I'm, I don't either, I guess. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Are you still trying to get her go to her? I mean, I'm angry. I'm the third time I've expressed my anger towards you. Sure, I am. And I see you smiling at me now, you know, and if anything else is going to get my go, that's going to be it. And you're smiling right back at it. Oh, well, uh, yeah. But, uh, but, my, uh, but I, I don't think my words, I don't know. I don't know you feel my anger, but I do feel. And I don't know. And now I'm going to say, geez, maybe he's trying to get a silver star or something. You know, I, I'm really confused now. I think it's interesting that... Uh, some members of the group, particularly the man with the black shirt, comes back to his anger toward Kathy. Uh, I think this is bound to happen when uh, feelings have not been as fully expressed as they might be. And also, I think he feels he has never gotten uh, a real response from her to him. I believe if this was a continuing encounter group, that this is the kind of situation where these two people would get together afterward and probably really perhaps slug it out, talk it out, uh, at any rate that they would uh, get to know each other uh, much better than they have in this, uh, in this group. That was facetious. But I, I felt that you got angry at me for something that just felt. Yeah, I guess I was angry that you persistently, you you know, was going after. Yeah, but you didn't say that to me. Yeah, I picked it up, but I heard you kind of going around the, around the horn, you know, a little bit. Yeah. And I, I guess I would I would feel better towards you if you could have said that. But what, what are you doing, Kathy? You know, I wanted to tell you that just to get all kind of hostility here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I would feel better if you had told me directly. Instead of going around the horn. And maybe this is a good note to close on. Time is up. Knowing that there are some negative feelings in the group as well as positive. When I said that uh, this is a good note to close on, 
It was not because I really thought it was a particularly good note to close on, uh, but simply that our time was up. We had agreed to let this group run for a certain length of time, and that time was up. And I feel that um, for this, as for most encounter group sessions, there really is no um, appropriate closing time. You always close in the middle, except perhaps at the very last session when things may round themselves off to a uh, meaningful conclusion. Uh.